Hi, and welcome to Ottawa English. I'm Angela. And today we're looking at how to get a high score in CELPIP Speaking Task 4. I know vocabulary is something many of you worry about, but let's see if we can reduce some of that stress. CELPIP examiners use this rubric to score each of the speaking tasks, and clearly vocabulary is not the only thing they're looking at. It is just one of four categories. So don't spend more time here than anywhere else as you're doing your preparation. So now even within the vocabulary category, there are several factors that will contribute to your score. Obviously, word choice matters, but this one here, suitable use of words and phrases, means you're flexible enough to find an alternative way to say something when you can't think of the exact word, and you don't use the same words over and over again. This one down here, precision and accuracy, means you use the tools of language efficiency as you speak. Let's take a look at a response to this prompt where we identify some things that might happen next. This is the picture that we're predicting and this is the response that I've prepared. Stop the video for a moment and read it. Typically we would dock a boat, but if you're uncomfortable with that phrase, you could say tie up or fasten. Instead of go ashore, you could say get off the boat. For dash and splash, you could just say chase each other. And if you didn't know the word for crumb, a piece of bread would do just as nicely. I use tummies here, but you could say stomachs. And for elderly, old would do. The river could weave just as well as meander. Or our seniors could just walk along the river. We don't actually have to have the river doing anything. And finally, they could meet or run into old friends and share their health issues rather than have them in common. With any of these alternatives, I would still get a good score for vocabulary because all of my choices are appropriate. I get my score for range of suitable use of words and phrases from this dash and splash, wherever they started out, walking along the river's edge, and this very eloquent phrase, get chatting and have in common. For precision and accuracy, I pick up a lot of points for this possessive. These participle adjectives and these little parallels, they all go a long way to giving me a good precision and accuracy score because they make my language efficiency. I don't need to use as many words to complete my description. Okay, so as you can see, there's a lot more to getting your vocabulary score than just knowing specific words and phrases. Now let's take a look at how we can pick up some points in the other sections. For content and coherence, I've started straight in on my first area of activity. You don't need to describe the picture all over again. The ideas I offer are good quality because they're somewhat realistic. I've organized them into three main ideas. And I've used a referent in my prepositional phrase so that it's totally clear who I'm talking about. And I've provided plenty of details. For my listenability score, I pronounce every word very clearly. And my accent isn't a problem as long as the examiner can hear the word endings that identify whether I'm speaking about the past, the present or the future. For a full score here, I mustn't correct myself more than I would in my own language. And I mustn't pause too often. I want to appear to be very confident about my ability to communicate in English. In terms of grammar, I've used a combination of present, future and past tenses.
and I've used the future of prediction. I haven't used the future of intention, going to, because I don't know any of these people or what their intentions are. Instead, I've used will probably, may and might. These three alternatives reflect the typical Canadian desire to escape. It's why there's an A at the end of every statement. These mechanisms let you change your mind, avoid conflict and stay out of trouble. Imagine talking about the weather. I make a bold statement. It's a beautiful day. By adding A, I leave an escape, just in case you don't agree with me. And you respond, it's freezing cold. And now I can add to my statement to show that I actually agree with you. Yeah, that that breeze is is a bit chilly. (laughs) And so I've escaped. I'm no longer committed to it being a beautiful day. It leaves a little bit of room for movement. Sentence variety can be a little tricky in speaking because you can't go back and check how many sentences start the same way. So I suggest you get lots of practice saying things in different ways. In terms of sentence variety here, I've used subordinating conjunctions and reference to show the examiner I'm comfortable using complex sentences. And I've also got a couple of conjunctive adverbs. And now we get to the last section, task fulfillment. And my response is relevant and complete because it offers the predictions I'm asked for. The tone is appropriate. It's general enough that the person I'm talking to could be anyone. And the length is good because it fills the 60 seconds allowed for my response without leaving too much time when I'm not saying anything. I hope that's given you some ideas about ways you can pick up points for a good score, even if you don't have the world's best vocabulary. Thanks for watching. Bye now.